Um, so as you all uh, designed the piece at the speed, it's in a very large scale th three channel projection um, in, a, in a wonderfully spacious room, but the piece is also designed to be um, a flat screen on three screens. Um, so could you talk a bit about um, how you see the viewer's relationship to the work in these different contexts and maybe a little bit also about how you showed it at Hancock Shaker Village? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the way it's being shown at the speed is really the ideal, you know, with the, the much larger scale projections and the immersive sound, it's, it's, it's a, it's a much more of the experience that we imagined when we were kind of finishing it. Um, because with the, with the larger kind of floor to scale projections, you really are able to enter into it more like a place right um and the feeling i think is stronger uh, it operates differently when you see it as flat screens and i think that works best when you're seeing it kind of amongst all the photographs all the diptychs and triptychs of the photographs and then it almost functions like it's a kind of moving triptych right with these large flat screens um and it then it really interacts in an interesting way with with all the diptychs and triptychs of photographs. Um, so I think that's where where the um, the flat screen version comes in. Yeah. And it might be even I mean I I would love to I mean I like Mariam said the intention was to have this large scale um, installation and being that I have not actually experienced it I can't say. But what I would imagine is like, from my experience of when it was in the gallery and it was on the three channels and then the picture, the photographs, it almost feels more of like, a, um, his, like where you're kind of confused. Is this like a recreation, a historical fiction? It gets it into more of this kind of um, uh, like, I don't, I'm losing the word that I want it, like where it's like a document, you know, and like it's more research, the, like the research element to it, it's more stark. Um, mm -hmm. And whereas with, if you enter an installation, it's much more experiential and much more immersive. And, and then the person can go on that journey with us together in a much more felt way, as opposed to more like, I'm looking at this and I'm trying to wrap my brain around what's going on here, um, which is, you know, another way of experiencing something, but it's much more, I would imagine, much, it's much, for me, it was much more detached as I would imagine than an installation to be. Yeah, I think with the, the work involving um, performance, for me, it always works best in presentation when the human body is actually at human body scale, right? Um, because then, you know, it just, it just feels more present. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. And just, you know, for example, hearing a bird chirping behind you mm -hmm. or hearing the leaves rustle off to the side or yeah. something like that. Um, that makes a huge difference as well. That's why we work with spatialized sound in, in basically all of the performed places series. Because um, it, it gives so much, the, the sense of place is so so filled out by sound actually in ways that I think we often don't think about. Um, but, you know, the flatness of the screen is really kind of in a way undone by the fullness and spatialization of the sound, right? It tricks you, it tricks you into thinking you're not in a flat, in front of a flat screen, but actually in a, in a, in a full space. I think you're absolutely right. And, uh... This exhibition will have a nice long run and the very tail of it, who knows, may come around the time of a vaccine being announced. So <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah. But who knows? Yeah. You asked about the Hancock Shaker Village also. And I think uh, what's interesting is this piece really is traveling through a lot of places with Shaker collections. So it was at Hancock, actually in a Shaker village. Um, then it was at the Courier Museum of Art when they were doing a show on the um, Shakers in the Modern World. So that was in New Hampshire. Um, and um, after the speed, it's actually going to the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Um, 
again, alongside their shaker collection. <laughs> so I think it, it's, a, it's kind of amazing that it's having that specific life um, in institutions where it's being put next to those objects um, that often, I think, I was talking to the Smithsonian curator about this, you know, sometimes when you look at the shaker objects, it's hard to connect them to the shaker history, to like the actual story and the actual way that shaker life was lived. And I think, you know, having a piece like this um, next to those objects really wakes them up in a, in an, in a kind of surprising way. Right? So. Yes, I think it definitely helps them feel come alive. Mm -hmm. um, and it should be mentioned that our curator, Scott Urbis, did an incredible job putting um, stories and personal narratives next to this furniture. So I feel like that complements your work very well in terms of yeah. hu humanizing the history and making it feel relatable. It's great. 